During these days, we found out that there is a lot of interest in the Catalonia situation, of course, and we had the chance of speaking with Raúl yesterday, um, but um, we thought that it could be interesting to have a plenary session specifically on Catalonia. So we're very happy and thankful to have Marga here. Uh, Marga, she is the, in the board of uh, the executive board in Izquierda Unida, and she's the president of the foundation of Izquierda Unida, which is called Foundation of the Citizens for Europe, or something yes. like that. <laughs> um, and she will try to dig, uh, dig a little bit into the um, genesis of the, of the uh, current situation and give us a couple of hints and insight, political insights from uh, the discussion that is um, happening around this uh, topic in, in Izquierda Unida. Uh, but also personal opinions, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we will have like a 20 minute um, like um, input and then we will have a lot of time, plenty of time to, for Q&A's, if that's good for you. Okay, good morning uh, everybody, thank you very much for coming. Uh, this morning there is a demonstration all around the country in front of every city hall. Uh, it's a call made up for the citizen movements demanding dialogue uh, in Spain between the two governments. But uh, I consider it's most important to be here to talk to you and to exchange with you some ideas, not only to inform you about my personal or the left perspective on the problem with Catalonia, but also for me it will be very interesting to know your opinion also and your point of view for a problem which is something, uh, for, on one side it's an unexpected problem. This is one of the issues we have to deal with, it's quite unexpected. In this country, two years ago, it was unthinkable that we are going to rise to this situation. This is one uh, a specific characteristic of the Catalonian uh, problem. And the second one is because the next week, in two days, we can have the different options. One could be the declaration of the independence from the government of Catalonia, or the reaction of the state, who could be the, to take over the autonomy, of course, and even the, there is one possibility, and terrible possibility, of sending the army to Catalonia. So as if the possibility of a violent confrontation is a small possibility, I think, but it still exists, and it is there. I think for us, for the left, it's something really serious to confront us and to be in front of that possibility, which is, let me insist, something not very realistic because I think nobody wants it in this country to have a violent confrontation, but the possibility exists and is there. And it could happen the next week. Anyway, so let me introduce myself. And um, of course, I'm a left person, a member of the Board of Izquierda Unida, but also uh, uh, the, the ideas I'm going to share with you this morning about the Catalonian question is not only my personal, it's my personal opinion, but it's the same opinion of Unidos Podemos. I mean, uh, is the same opinion of Ada Colau, Podemos, and Izquierda Unida. We have the, shared this idea about how to deal with this situation, which is very difficult for the left. Because in any moments of history, I think it's all around Europe, when there's two nationalism confrontation, the arguments are so low, the, the, the dialogue is not possible, it's a question of feelings, it's a question of sentiments, it's quite irrational. So for the left, it's something that we are outside the debate. Clearly, the left in this country is not an agent who is actively acting in the confrontation that existed today. And uh, it's not easy uh, to do it, but anyway, we are going to try it now. One of the, the let me start with, uh, with uh, some history of uh, Spanish history, because I think one of the best the, the, the most terrible things that neoliberalism has done is to create this idea that history does not exist, that there's only one event or one uh, moment, no? not analyzing neither the causes nor the consequences. So I, I know all of you saw the pictures, the images and the videos on the repression of the people in Catalonia that wanted to vote, which was criminal, absolutely terrible. But this moment has a history behind and has some kind of consequences. So I would like to share with you at least our perspective of the recent history of Spain, trying to understand uh, 
why this thing uh, is like this, and also th who are the political actors in this conf actual confrontation. So, uh, uh, Spanish history, I mean, one of the, uh, the, the ghosts we have in Spain is the ghost of a uh, civil war, because we had one, as you know, a terrible one, which was a very ideological one in the 30s. No? But after that, we have 40 years of dictatorship. 40 years, let me insist on that. Which was almost the half of the 20th century, we live in a dictatorship who was based in a national Catholicism and the unity of the country. One of the bases of the Franco dictatorship uh, was to forbidden to speak in another language except the Spanish, of course, deny the possibilities of different nations inside Spain. We have four nations in Spain, which is Spain, Galicia, Galicia is said in English? Anyway, Galicia, which is a, a small country, uh, uh, Portugal, the Vasconian country, and the Catalonian country. No? And uh, it, this is important in order to understand the reaction of this, the far right now here in Spain, because it's connected with the Franco dictatorship also. No? And the incapability. Uh, of uh, creating an, a, a new perspective for the whole country because we have a original sin, which is that our democracy came from a dictatorship with no break. I mean, Franco died in his bed. Not, there was no a political uh, or social revolution. I mean, no. And that created a continuity between the structures of the state who was under Franco dictatorship that still existed today, some of them. And of course, the reproduction of the elites of the country, with some of them, are the same families that were under the Franco dictatorship. Even Catalonian families, of course, I mean, because uh, later we'll talk about the, the, rich, the rich guys of Catalonia who was absolutely part of the, of the system, even during Franco dictatorship. So this continuity uh, between Franco dictatorship and, uh, and the actual Spain is one of the reasons to understand the situation now. When Franco dies in 1975, then start a period uh, in Spain we call the transition. And it's the myth of the country today, is that we failed living in a dictatorship for 40 years, but we did it very well in that transition. So it's a, it's a consensus of the country how well we did it during the transition. This transition was made, was based on something that we call the big consensus, who was a deal among all the political forces, including the Communist Party. And this consensus created a constitution, which is the constitution of the 1978. That's the reason because we call it the regime of 78, because it's based on that constitution, who was based in different consensus. One of the consensus uh, is, it was, to accept the existence in the country of different autonomies, in that different territories. Spain is almost a federal state in terms of law. I mean, all the, uh, we have 17 autonomous communities, and it's almost a federal state, believe me. I mean, I think there is a federal state who less autonomy than uh, there are in some territories, including Catalonia. But I wanted to stress this because I tend to show you that even in the moment, in 1978, when the Constitution was written, the territory problem was there. And there was a way how to um, make a consensus, how can we live together inside one state, and it was the creation of this almost federal state, almost. And the second consensus was, in, in, uh, the mythology of that moment said that the Communist Party uh, demanded this uh, federal state, and they say, okay, federal state, but you have to accept the monarchy and the flag. The question of the flag is important because if you go to the street today, you will see that there is different Spanish flags on the balconies. This is far right. All of them, because in Spain, the flag is a Franco flag. And the left defend the Republican flag, which is a different one. Because when, when Franco arrives, he created a new flag and took over the, the Republican flag. Uh, flag. So 
uh, there was a, it's a flag battle now we have, which is uh, that's the reason because I, I put it to you because the flag is related with the king, and it's related with the Franco dictatorship. So if you see one flag, it's not innocent, mostly. I mean, there is a nationalist perspective behind. Anyway, so this transition uh, was based also in the idea that the king was. Uh, the savior, I mean, Salvador, como se dice? The savior of the country, now, because we have a coup d'etat in 1981, and this, we suppose that the king saved the democracy, things like that. So these things are the myth in which our democracy is based. And this myth, it worked for the elites perfectly well during you know, almost 30 years. I mean, there was no confrontation to this narrative or to uh, this state of things. No? We have a good constitution, we have a good king, and we have the things going quite well. The problem for them arises in, in two things. During all this period, the territory problem in Spain was the Basconian country, not Catalonian. It was the Basconian country who was an army group, who was ETA, who killed in this country more than 1,000 people in 30 years. So all of us, we thought that the problem, the territorial problem in Spain was focused on the Basconian country. And we never thought that that happened in Catalonia. <coughs> we, we, we could have expected that from the Basque country, but not from Catalonia, which is something uh, also unexpected. No? But in, uh, I, I may insist that in all these 40 years of transition, until the Indignados movement, no? which is you know, the, the break of this consensus in 2011, uh, the Catalonian elite, who has ruled Catalonia, the same political party, a right-wing party, for 36 years, the same political party who is demanding now the independence, is the party who has ruled Catalonia for 36 years, and was a party who supported clearly this consensus for 40 years was part of the consensus. Actually, this transition was based in a two-party system, the political part, uh, the popular party, I mean the right-wing party and the socialist and the democrat, and there was you know, one government on another government, one on another, and when the right-wing party needed some support, they looked for the Catalonian nationalists to support the right-wing in Spain for the government of the country, which is a contradiction because they had been allies for years. And now there's uh, this confrontation. But let me insist that even the independence movement in Catalonia is not a right-wing movement, of course not, but it's, lead, it's leading by a party who is a right-wing party, which is another contradiction of this story. And that was part of this consensus of all these years. No? Anyway, the Basque country is not, uh, was, uh, let's say, um, not defeated, it's not a, uh, but anyway, uh, when ETA disappeared, the nationalists in the Basque country was quite calm. And also the nationalists in the Basconian country is led also by a right-wing party. I mean, the two nationalists in Catalonia and the Basconian are led by right-wing parties. Let me insist on that. I, I, I had a, a wonderful teacher in the university, the best teacher I ever had, which was a teacher in the history of Spain. <laughs> And he used to say to me that, don't forget, never forget that the nationalism in Spain is an ally of the right-wing party. Because it's confronted from some parts of the elites, I will tell you later. It's not the situation now, but traditionally, that is how this nationalism was based. In the industrial bourgeoisie, and uh, in the Basconian industrial bourgeoisie also. But anyway, so uh, just only to, 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 to say to you that something broke with the economic crisis, not only it was a huge economic crisis for the working class and the popular classes in Spain, but also uh, the political, this political system break also. When the Indignados movements arose in the May, 15th of May in 2011, there was the demonstration that this system, this transition, this perfect system was broken from inside, that it didn't work anymore. And there is a lot of analysis in Europe saying that in Spain we don't have a stream right party because of the Indignados movement. I'm not so sure about that, but anyway, uh, what is true that the Indignados movement, the, the 15M movement, was a way in which a lot of people who was felt themselves as 
it's not only the exploitation, but they don't have expectation in life because of the economic crisis. I mean, there was a force in which you, you know, channel of your energies it was the indignado movement demanding more democracy, more justice, and more equality, which was really fantastic. No? And also because Podemos arise from that new movement. No? And the appearance of Podemos, and this is one of my theses, uh, I said to Vera, uh, the rise of Podemos is something that was absolutely unexpected from the elite also. And uh, when Podemos arrived, Podemos and Ciudadanos, which is another political party, new political party in Spain, these Ciudadanos, which is, means citizens, is a Catalonian-based country, ultra-nationalist, Spanish nationalist. So Catalonian people, Spanish nationalist. I mean, so this uh, political party uh, was new, so Ciudadanos and Podemos arose, so the, the consensus was break. That was not based in the same uh, political basis that was created 40 years before. And the most amazing thing, and this is my thesis, is that Podemos won the elections in Catalonia twice. I mean, the general elections, not the regional election of Catalonia, but when we have general elections, and we have two general elections, uh, uh, the, in 2015, Podemos won the elections in Catalonia. And my thesis is that is one of the, 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 the spark from the independence movement is my thesis because if I were a rich Catalonian guy who has been ruling Catalonia for 40 years, a corrupted system, because it's a corrupted party, of course, like a popular party in Spain, who has everything under control, the bank system. Because in the Catalonian, the, the most important bank of Catalonia is one of the most important European banks, which is La Caixa. Absolutely connected with the political corrupt system. Uh, in a moment that is, uh, they rule Catalonia like they host, because it, they, they, they were always the, the owners of Catalonia. And suddenly, another political party, Podemos, won the elections, I will fear, fear about the future. So why not? I mean, to change something. Because they, they could, and we hope it, they, they, they will lose power uh, in Catalonia, of course, in the rest of the country too. But anyway, this is one of my theses. It's not, uh, it's not the words. Anyway, I think that one of the spark was the, the raising of En Comú Podem. En Comú Podem is a coalition, meaning in common we can and it's a coalition of political parties and citizens under the leadership of Ada Colau, which is a very strong leader in Catalonia, in the whole country, but especially in Catalonia. So if I were a rich guy in Catalonia, I, I would fear uh, about Ada Colau or about this new movement of citizens that was created in, under different bases that always ruled in Catalonia. But anyway, this is my personal analysis. This is not on the debate yet, no? Okay, this is the... the history of the politics in Spain, no? how the transition system was breaking, and the, uh, the, this consensus is completely broken. But there is also, let me insist now, uh, that there is also a class analysis of what is happening. As you know, in 2008, where the economic crisis appears, uh, all the countries of Europe suffer the economic crisis, but in Spain we suffer it double because the economic system was based on a bubble of uh, building houses and a financial system. So the disindustrialization of the country was a reality during the 90s and the, the, the beginning of the 20s. And uh, there was a fiction. I mean, we have, uh, I don't know, but it was like the, the, the country in Europe with more uh, black money uh, or more people who has, uh, that, you know that in Spain we have the half of the 500 uh, billetes, uh, no, 500 euros note, the half of the European was in, in Spain because of the, black, uh, of the black money existed related to the housing and related with the financial system and the banks. So when the banks, is, I mean, that was a mess. So when the financial crisis arise, arose, sorry, uh, the, the mess was absolutely, I mean, the, the bubble exploded, there was an unemployment rate of only 30%. Uh, 
the level of and uh, poverty of the people was very quick. I mean, in five, four years, the people lose almost 25, 30, half, 55% five, of the level, uh, the standards they have. So it was really very quick and very disastrous. No? And uh, that was also uh, affected the, the sensation that the people have about the future. Because people was very depressed, but especially the young people who was that reason because the indignados movements arise, no? because in Spain it's quite it was easy to access to the university, so we have a lot of wonderfully training young people, but with a labor market who only offer them to be a waiter in a in a bar, literally, because uh, this country only have tourism, so it was a contradiction that um, a lot of parts, especially with the young people, felt that there was no future for them, went to the street, created the Indignados movement, who was also a class reaction of the economic crisis. But in Catalonia, it was different. And that is one, I think, important point. No? This nationalism in Catalonia uh, was started uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, very related with the, with the Bourgeoisie. Bourgeoisie? Bourgeoisie, it's in English, bourgeois. With, with the bourgeois. Actually, when I said bourgeois, you say, ah, oh, this is old-fashioned word. No, no, they call themselves Catalonian bourgeois. But they call it very proudly, because it's their national project. I mean, if you go to Catalonia or live there, you know that the Catalonian national project is based in the bourgeois project. And they did it very proudly. Because it's a, it was a, an industrial uh, and very rich territory of Spain. When there is no more industry anymore, I think that is one of the reasons to explain uh, how quick and how big the independence movement is in Catalonia, and what, how uh, quick it grows. Uh, we have to, to look at this question. Five years ago, no, two years ago, the level of independent people who demand independence in Catalonia was the 17%, 20%. The most amazing thing is, is the, the party who is demanding now that the, the independence was not an independent uh, party 10 years ago or seven years ago. So my, my, the question for me is why so many people joined the independent movement in Catalonia in a short period of time? And so immensely, because almost the half of the population in Catalonia, I mean, more than two million and a half, uh, are supporting the independence of the country. So I'm an old Marxist, so I try to look these things in a, in a, in a class perspective. No? And I think one of the, 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 the answers, one of them, is precisely that. That in Catalonia live the, under the idea that they are a rich part of, the, of Spain, based on an industry, a strong industry, and in a bourgeois uh, cultural hegemony. No? Now there is no industries anymore. The economic uh, situation in Catalonia is not very much different than other pa rich parts of your countries, which are the press. And this middle class who thought that the future was, as always, related to be richer and to be a professional and to be a bourgeois uh, way of life, realize that there is no that future, such a future anymore. So it's in a way, for me, this reaction to join the independent movement is a reaction of the middle class who has realized that they are not middle class anymore. And there is no future for them. There is no project, no future. There is no project. That is one of the failures of the left, that we don't offer clearly, as Juan Carlos said yesterday, and agree on that, uh, a narrative of the future for some parts of our population who are suffering a lot. And one of the things that they suffer is that, okay, I'm a, a very well-trained person, but it's impossible to find a job in that sector, and more than probably, the best option for you is to be a waiter in a pizza bar uh, for the richer workers of the north who come to Spain for tourism. So that could be one of the reasons why the people joined so emotionally the independent movement. 
Because the most amazing for me, I'm, I'm an ideological person, I'm a Marxist, and I, I, I I'm declare myself completely uh, incapable, um, incapable of understanding the nationalist narrative. There is no, it's, it's, it's irrational in both sides. Huh? So let me tell for you my, my doubts, which is the independent movement in Catalonia is based in two ideas. I'm, I'm looking better if she agrees or not. One idea is Spain doesn't love us. And the second is Spain is still us. Because they say that they pay more taxes than they receive from the state. That's all. There is no more. There is no more. The rest, for me, is like we want to be free, uh, which is, everybody share that. We want to vote, which are, I defend absolutely the right to vote, of course, and the self-determination, of course. That's not the problem. No? That I don't understand. And on the opposite side, we have this uh, uh, nationalism, in Spain nationalism, which is based in Franco dictatorship. And the main idea is the unity of the country is sacred by God. <laughs> no, honestly, the main pillar of the Franco ideology was Spain is, this is real, eh? Spain is a unity in the destiny of the universe. <laughs> that was written in the stone. It's crazy, but it's true. It's, it's, that is the level of the, of, the, of the irrationality confronting that. So when you talk about, uh, I accept perfectly well the, the idea of a referendum of self-determination of the Catalan people, of course. But when I debate, we see people in Spain, no, 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 they, they don't have the right to vote. I say, why? Because, because we have to be united in a country. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and the violence is the next answer. Yes, the violence is the next answer. That is the problem of, of, I have with this. This is not a rational debate. And it's very emotional. And I think that this is not a wrong analysis, uh, say to you, it's an incomplete, but it's part of the analysis. So what is the scenarios we are confronting now? And how can we help? That is the idea. No? On the 1st of October, we saw in the TV this terrible situation with the police uh, attacking the people who wanted to vote, which was criminal, really. It was mm, terrible. But I must say that the repression stopped at 12 or 1 because the international impact of the images of the repression. So it's not a small thing that you and your countries denounce the repression and support the idea of a dialogue uh, solution of the Catalonian country because the government is it was really very affected of the international impacts of the images of the repression Th this is one thing because the next week uh, as you see uh, the day after tomorrow push them on which is the president of the Catalonian state and the leader of this right-wing party defending the independence ask to go to the Catalonian Parliament and probably he will declare unilaterally the independence of Catalonia. I have doubts he's going to do that because it's completely crazy. Because the next day, uh, Spain, of course, will never will accept that. So he's going to apply something that we call the 155 article of the Constitution of the Spanish state, who said that uh, if there is some problem in some autonomy territory, the state has the right to take over uh, the administration and the government of that uh, autonomy territory. We never applied that article before, but it's on the table that the government wants to apply it. And I'm sure it's going to happen because uh, we have a king in Spain. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, this king, who is this, uh, no, let me say it, who is the grandson of a coward who leaves the country because of the Second Republic. He is the son of a corrupted man who was the previous king. He is the, the brother of a corrupted woman who is almost in jail. Uh, this family, lovely family, who is 
ruling the country as the monarchy, appears on TV. He never appeared on TV, only in Christmas. Uh, yeah, no, it's amazing, but this is true. Only in Christmas, we, we, we make jokes about it, I mean, it's really... Uh, he appears on TV very seriously, and he make a discourse to the country, uh, who was, on my perspective, an extreme right discourse. Menacing the Catalonian people with a finger, eh? Menacing the people. You don't have the right to be uh, outside the Spanish law. And everybody understood that the king on the TV saying that is because the government is going to apply the 155 article and take over the Catalonian autonomy. And putting the king on the TV is one way to a signal to the international community first, because I don't know why the people think that the king is something serious. I mean, <laughs> no, honestly, but it's something that... Uh, uh, <clears throat> really, I mean, he's an idiot, and in, uh, with, a, with a, the Bourbons, in, uh, it's uh, really... I mean, we have a... a, a <laughs> let me, because it's terrible. We have a sentence in his space who said that all the monarchies steal, but the Bourbons are especially good doing that. No. <laughs> Anyway, there was a reaction to the king's speech, which was really a far-right uh, speech. So it was the first time the king was not the king of everyone, was the king of the right part of the government, which maybe is something our people remember later, but I don't know, I don't know. So more than probably the, the autonomy will be take over. And of course, I expected a reaction on the streets, because if two million of people wanted to vote, two million of people are going to defend the right to, to vote, which insists we defend that right. So uh, there is a possibility that at the end of the week, more police or the army will be there. Nobody wants this situation. That is something I really think. Nobody wants this situation. Well, somebody, of course, but... Uh, so there are some possibilities of some kind of dialogue. But, and let me finish with this, one of these two things. What is the rational solution of this situation? It's something that the Spanish government doesn't want to hear about, which is a legal referendum. It's to deal, or to pack a legal referendum of self-determination in Catalonia. This is the most rational solution, but it's not accepted by the Spanish state. Not, it's not only the right-wing party, the Social Democratic Party uh, is not going to accept it, neither. I think only Unidos Podemos and, of course, the nationalists, we are talking about this possibility, which is the only rational way of uh, making any solution. But I don't think that is going to happen soon, probably in the next future. And the other question is that to defeat the Catalonian uh, in another way. And let me finish this part of history with this. In all this period, I was thinking, where are the capitalists? I mean, the real owners of companies, because they said nothing uh, on the independence movement in Catalonia. And uh, I mean, we know that we're against the Catalonian independence, but they said nothing. But two days ago, they started moving. And they said that they are going to leave Catalonia if the independence is declared. And we're talking about this La Caixa Bank, which is the bank of the elite in Catalonia, which is amazing. No? The other bank, which is Sabadell Bank, is a big bank, but it's also uh, the, the energy companies. And I, I'm thinking it's all these companies are related with the political power in a way or in another. No? But anyway, they say they are going to leave the country because one of the things that I think that they, they push them on is balancing now, is that if it declared the independence, they expected the recognition of the Catalonian country for some European country. And that is not going to happen, at least now. So, I mean, it will be really a, a very difficult situation, especially for, for the Catalonian people and, and for the rest of us, which is really a very bad, very, very bad situation. And let me finish only with, <coughs> with uh, what happened in the left. I mean, because the left in Spain, we have different visions of uh, what is happening in Catalonia. We don't have any division on the solution. I mean, all of us in Catalonia and outside Catalonia, Unidos Podemos, even the trade unions, or the people uh, in Catalonia, we defend the self-determination rights as a solution. Uh, Izquierda Unida, my political party, we defend a, a, a federal solution, of course, a federal state. 
uh, based on the autonomy of the self-determination of each part. I mean, uh, it's a traditional proposal of the left. No? Under a republic, of course, without king, without king but anyway. <laughs> that's, uh, it's important because you will see if you go uh, to see the Republican flag, it's a left person who is defending that. So it's uh, that question. But there is different views. And I'm afraid I'm not very optimistic in the situation. There is all the people on the left who have a more optimistic perspective. It's not mine. No? There is some group of the left who think that is a good news this uh, problem of the Catalonia because, and we must support the independence of Catalonia, because if Catalonia became independence, the problem created to the state, the Spanish state, is going to give us an opportunity, you know, to go to this problem and to break uh, just a little more the transition system of the 68, no? To break, as we said, the regime of the 78. This is one uh, perspective defended by some part of the left, which has arguments. I'm not agree, but have arguments. I mean, it's not uh, idiot because the country is so worried about that. It's so worried what is happening. Everybody is so worried that it, it, it's going to be half some cost for the government. I mean, to, to this situation. So anyway, so but they say that the conclusion is that we must support the independence movement in order to create this um, disruption in the. Uh, natural order of things in Spain. No? Anyway, this is that's one position. Darokov is connected with the uh, left independence uh, movement, which is the CUP. CUP is a political party of radical left in Catalonia, uh, which is an excellent party, except for me, because they are independentists. But anyway, they're excellent, really. You know? uh, but, uh, but there is more. And let me insist on that because it is true. The independence movement in Catalonia is not led by the left, it's left by the right. And I think it's important in terms of political analysis. No? But anyway, so there is another uh, people of the left in Spain who don't say that, but they're completely against the idea of the independence of Catalonia, completely against, and belongs to the cultural currency of the rest of the country who defend the idea of the unity. And this is something who thinks a lot of part of the working class in Spain. That is the problem. I mean, the poor people, popular classes, the working class support the idea of the unity of the state. I mean, the idea of supporting the self-determination referendum in Catalonia is something that is not a working class proposal. It's a proposal from the intellectuality, the intelligentsia. It's not, you know, a shared proposal. Uh, on the street, which is a problem we have. Anyway, and there is another proposal from the left, who is now the proposal defended by Ada Colau, Pablo Iglesias, and Alberto Garzón, and me, of course, because they are my bosses, <laughs> which is this one, is that uh, Spain, uh, the regime of the 78 is breaking down, not only in Catalonia, but for the rest of the country. We defend the idea of the self-determination in Catalonia, but under a legal referendum, and equal uh, possibilities for all the options. We would like to defend a referendum in Catalonia, not only independence, yes or not, but independence, federal state, or being uh, in Spain, I mean, with different options. And we are going to fight for that. And in the rest of the, and insisting all the time that our option in this independence referendum in Catalonia will be no to the independence. But we defend the right to, be, to decide the independence, but we the, prefer the option of not being independent because we don't think it's a good idea for the working class in Catalonia anyway. Uh, this is another question. So uh, let me finish only with uh, this worry I have. We, the, one year ago, two years ago, in 2015, we had two general elections in Spain and we were one year with our government. We were very close to break this regime of 78, very close to break it and breaking down. We had, they had to repeat the elections because they weren't possible to create the government and things like that. And during that period, the corruption of the ruling party in the, in the country, the popular party, was so amazing that they have 800 members of the right-wing party, the popular party, in. Uh, uh, in trials, I mean, under the justice, because they are corrupted, 800. So it was a system completely corrupted. The sad thing is that today, nobody talks about that. 
and nobody talks about the 25% of unemployment. Nobody talks about the social proposals we made. The only question is the national and Catalonian question, and it's something that we really need help because we don't know how to deal with that. It's impossible to open another debate except Catalonian. And we, as a lefty, we are not in a good position, so I'm not very optimistic, really. I think that uh, everybody's playing a chess mate, and uh, it's difficult for the left to, to be, we are quite rational, emotional too, but quite rational to go in a, in a debate which is not very much rational. So anyway, we hope that they don't declare the independence or they declare the independence, they say that they are going to declare it in six months, that is another possibility, to give six months more of negotiations. We are demanding an, um, moderators? Uh, facilitators from the international, uh, I don't think the government will never accept that, but anyway, facilitators or different examples, and we, what we really know is international pressure on the Spanish government not to send the army to Catalonia and try to find a peaceful solution. Anyway, thank you. I learn, I learn a lot from Marga every time I listen to her. <laughs> so I don't know if you have any mm -hmm. remarks, questions. Uh, hi, thank you so much for sharing um, all of the history and your perspective on it. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about um, what the meaningful difference would be between the current uh, autonomous status and the um, federal state proposal that that you're speaking about that is your you know favored outcome yeah also very thank you very much and uh, I think if something breaks you you don't see it in the middle at the first step but you see it at the front just and it sounds like me that that it's not a, a specific specific uh, problem of Catalonia but a problem of Spain in it in its middle and uh, it seems to me as it has something to do that Rajoy and his clique and his and his uh, gang uh, wants to be to, to show strength by uh, to to uh, reach something something else but not it I it sounds when you when you talk that it's not Catalonia it, it must be something else but I can't identify feel like perhaps you can say some words about this Hey, um, thank you for your um, input. Um, I would like to ask, because you mentioned the interests from the president of Catalonia and the conservatives in agreeing in some, um, or forcing some independent movement, and, and I see uh, your points, but uh, as you mentioned, um, a, a majority voted for Podemos uh, just before, so there, or it seems to me that a big part of the movement still is a left movement. And um, like uh, yesterday, Raul uh, told us that this has this is like a hegemonic process. So the the right not just had their way in interest and planned to do that all the time, but they were also pressured by the people in Catalonia, also from left side, um, to agree in some kind of. Um, things and that the movement not only want to um, yeah, to be independent but also to have a new constitution in itself. And I think one of the reasons why Podemos gained so much popularity also was because they criticized the constitution in general and all the Franco system continuing uh, in Spain. And so I, I am asking myself um, to turn this um, um, the image of national conflict in this. Um, the only way for me is to say this is a, um, in Catalonia, this is not a conflict of Catalonia, but it's the conflict for all of Spain. It's a conflict for, it's a fight for democracy in all of the state. And I was interested in how um, 
how the left in the rest of Spain, because there were some demonstrations, I think, about um, Catalonia, um, No Esta Sola, or um, something like that. And if you could talk about the, um, yeah, the left movement from below, who is trying to gain more, um, yeah, more uh, impact in all this. Yeah, thank you for um, your input. Um, my question goes exactly in the same direction. I um, also find most convincing the um, federal um, resolution that you uh, federal solution that you um, proposed and that Izquierda Unida proposes. But I um, found it not very convincing your argument that the movement in Catalonia is led by the right. I would like to hear more arguments on that because. Um, that there is a regional government from the right is from a Marxist Gramscian analysis, n in fact, like not really an argument that a movement is led by this. There has to, it, it's about hegemony, what the people want, um, what the um, what the aims of the movement are, and I think there is a lot of social um, demands in it, and it's also crucial for the left to address these social demands. And my second question is also in the direction of what Rhonda said: um, How do you think? are the possibilities to mobilize in other parts of Spain um, for a federal solution that is linked with social demands. Because I also think it's absolutely uh, necessary to shift um, the, the conflict away from the only from the national question to like a, a social question. Uh, let me start from 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 the from the last two interventions. No, uh, yeah, the independence movement, as I said, is a transversal uh, movement. Uh, I mean, there is people from different class, social classes. Yes, yeah, and different interests also. Yeah, there. Yeah. But let me insist. I mean, it's a democratic movement demanding the right to be independent. Full stop. There is no political content. There is, of course, part of the movement who want uh, more social things, or more, but there is other parts of the movement who doesn't want it. And I'm going to be really, because it's important for me to say, the movement is a massive movement in Catalonia, and of course, there is a lot of left movements who support the idea of democratic right to vote. Absolutely, that is clear. And of course, it's always led by the left people, the demanding of the democratic right to vote. But at this very moment, the two leading political parties who has the role of lead this independence movement in Catalonia are right-wing parties. And the speaker of the independence movement in Catalonia is not a left person. And it's something that I know is quite contradictory. It is real. It is as it is. So what our people, our people, the left people in Catalonia said, what we want to do, they said in Catalonia, left people said, what we want to do is to break the hegemony of the right wings inside the independence movement. And I say, okay, I mean, th that's fine. But they want to break it because they don't have it. I, I mean, when the pa Parliament of uh, the Catalonia approves the, this referendum, except the coup, which is a, a, a wonderful but a small political party, the rest of the left political forces vote against. Abstention, sorry. That was not in favor of this referendum because it was led by the right wing party under conditions that this, they know that it was not democratic conditions. So it's something that I think we must to talk more about with the, in the left uh, movements in Catalonia. Because my worry is that, of course, the left people is always the most solidarity people, and is the first people going confronting the police, and is the people who is most solidarity defending the, the ballot boxes, and is the most solidarity people defending the, the people who is attacking by the police. It's not the rich people, it's our people who is defending that. So I think we need to also, of course, to help to bring, bring and to win the hegemony inside the independence movement. But it is not today. That's my opinion, I think it's a fact. That which is uh, 
not easy to deal. I mean, I would love that it will be a socialist movement in independent Catalonia. I will be independent too, I mean, if, if that's happened. But it is not the case, really. It is not. But anyway, uh, as you said, it's a democratic movement. The independent movement is a democratic movement demanding the independence of Catalonia. There is no one word about the kind of Catalonia. There is no one word about social rights. There is no one word about labor rights. It's amazing how irrational it is. It's just only we want to be independent, full stop. I think it's a reaction against the, the, the situation uh, or how is the situation dealing. But the problem is that when some movement is led by the right wing party, there is no arguments. Even there is argument for the independence. But there is not on the table by the speaker of the movement. It's just only that, that what they have. It, that is my personal, my, my personal opinion. And of course, there is a solidarity movement inside the rest of the country uh, with the people in Catalonia, which was Catalonia Nostra Sola. I mean, Catalonia, you are not alone. Uh, we went there to the Portal Sola. I was there where there was a lot of people, a lot of young people, especially. Uh, because precisely of the repression in Catalonia, and I think we have to strengthen the solidarity movement. That this is one of our tasks. And I hope the demonstrations today, I don't know if they will be big or not, uh, but I hope it's going to be well also demanding a, a peaceful solution, uh, a peaceful solution on, on the situation. And only two words more about the federalism. It's not a Izquierda proposal, it is a Izquierda proposal, but federalism in Spain has a long tradition. Because this territory a problem, we have it for centuries. So the first time that the federalism was a solution was in the 19th century, I think. And I start this uh, proposal. Uh, actually, the Social Democrats Party, uh, Partido Socialista Obrero Español, is supposed to be also defending federalism as a solution for the territorial problem in Spain. The, the, the only request of this federalism, which is, of course, the 17 uh, different federal states that have to be uh, a referendum if they want to be part of not of the federal state. I mean, that's had to be based on the voluntary basis, of course. And uh, it's, a, it's a system that we propose is in, in sometimes very similar to Germany in terms of, you know, taxes, the different parliaments, things like that. But anyway, we have it now. I mean, these 17 territories in Spain have their own parliaments. Uh, they can make uh, a lot of laws. I mean, there is a, it's a decentralized country. Health, justice, education is ruled by the territories, not by the national state. And the taxes is one third. Uh, for the autonomies and one third for the state. But the problem, I think, is that there is another nature. We think that the federalism is the, is the right answer, but and unfortunately, is a minority of the population who is thinking in that solution today. I, I think, it's, uh, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's very similar. It's, a, it's almost a federal state, Spain, with no mu much more autonomy for the for the region, specifically in taxes and uh, capacity of uh, uh, of uh, dealing with the taxes. Because I mean, what, what keep Spain not being a federal state is that we have a unique box of the social security. We call it like that. No, there is one ministry, and the taxes are ruled only by the ministry, not by the by the autonomous. But in terms of politics, is to have more autonomy, of course, and to build a new constitution of the country uh, in terms of guarantee those rights and who is going to rule that right. It's like another federal system. But it has to be based on the voluntary basis. That is the main difference with the autonomy now. That is not an imposed system, but a system that has to be created by the federal states. like uh, Daniel and Steve and ah, Jules. And then I think like if you want to raise a question or a comment, uh, do it now because we don't have that much more time. So I'm going to connect, uh, collect a couple of your comments and questions and then give back to Mara. Mm -hmm. um, I totally see your point on the Catalan bourgeoisie and their leadership in the, um, in the independence um, question. But I don't see why the people taking to the streets um, 
are irrational in their in their claims. Um, I think there has to be a reason why dog workers are blocking the police. I think there's a reason why um, farmers are blocking the streets and and so on and so on. And um, I think as as far as I am informed, the Catalan um, Assembly has also made a few. Um, good points against austerity, um, uh, uh, pro-refugee um, um, uh, things and stuff like that. And um, <clears throat> I wouldn't totally denounce that. I think that that also plays a, a vital role right now. And um, I would be interested, uh, interested what you have to say about that. Um, you said the uh Two main parties in Catalonia are right wing, but the ERC is isn't it more like a social democratic uh, democratic party? And in, if we see the laws they brought in, it's not like a right wing government we have in Spain. So it's I guess it's too easy to say the leadership of the movement is right wing and the leadership of the government is right wing when we have a strong social democratic, uh, democratic to left-wing bloc who is supporting the movement and could you answer why you say it's a right-wing if there are so much uh, parts in it who aren't right-wing and the other question also if it has a right-wing leadership when I saw the videos the uh, from the protest there were left-wing slogans on the streets and there were left-wing answers to the um, police brutality so it, uh, there's a left-wing base and the declaration of a free state and self-determination is a left-wing case it's why shouldn't we support it if there can be a base to build a new more left-wing state um, Uh, uh, so at first, uh, thank you very much. I think it's uh, very important. We talked uh, the last days uh, a lot about this question and uh, we had no solution. We only had uh, question marks. And um, very important uh, uh, to hear the Spanish uh, view because we've got um, in Germany uh, very different narratives. So um, I'm going to uh, show now three, three points. At first, uh, the Basque uh, question. So the ETA uh, gave up the weapons uh, because they said, okay, now we have uh, Europe. We don't want to be in Spain, but we are, uh, want to be in Europe. So, and now Europe is coming, so we don't have to fight for uh, independence. And so no one thought uh, it could be uh, an issue in uh, Catalonia. The second is um, about the king. Uh, it, the information in Germany is Uh, not the king of Spain accepted the democracy, but uh, he built the democracy because it's uh, uh, told that Franco wanted uh, back the king and uh, the king uh, uh, waited uh, until Franco is dead um, and the king wanted the democracy. That's the narrative in Germany. And uh, the question of Catalonia is uh, for the leftists in Germany very important because the narrative is the uh, Catalan identity is uh, connected with a, a left-wing identity. Uh, if you uh, look back to the 30s, uh, to the uh, Second Republic, uh, that the narrative is uh, Catalonia always have been very, very left, anarchist or socialist. Um, so, uh, because of that, uh, is um, for us uh, important and new to hear uh, that uh, it's uh, a leaded or uh, it's a strong uh, right wing movement in the independent movement. Um, there's definitely seems to be a lot of questions about the nature of. The, the independence movement, left versus right, and maybe this is a asking that question from a different angle, but the thing that I didn't hear from your presentation that I would be curious to know more about is what changed with this relationship that had sort of always existed between the PP and the right-wing 
Catalan nationalists that there was this level of collaboration and support and then suddenly it wasn't there. What changed on the ground? Was it pressure from below that caused that they had to address this or was there some, the deal somehow fell apart because somebody wasn't getting paid or uh, was it just two very strong male egos fighting it out and it's all personality? Okay, uh, <clears throat> since I'm coming from former Yugoslavia, uh, this situation somehow resembles our situation as well that we had during the 90s. And I have to remind you that nothing left-wing happened after the wars and after the breakup of Yugoslavia. That's what we have to have in mind. Uh, what I have to say follows on from that in a way, and it's really to question your, your kind of acceptance of self-determination as if it was a kind of simple principle, and I don't think it is a simple principle. Uh, I actually think that, uh, you know, there's always the problem of identifying, you know, who, of what is the question and what is the boundary or, you know, who, 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 who should vote. And, and actually, I think it, it relates to the kind of concept of nation. And uh, I think someone said yesterday that uh, the, 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 a nation may be a human construct, but it's also real. And, and it's true that it's real, but it's also contested. And people have multiple identities and uh, they're complex. And, uh, and, and, and the idea of self-determination, it seems to me, was, was invented by an American. American president and imposed by an American president who didn't understand the complexities of of, uh, of national identity in uh, in Europe and uh, you know the former Yugoslavia is obviously a good example uh, and um, and so I don't know how much that helps but I think because it you know I, I just think that that uh, you know your acceptance of self determination as a principle is is I think questionable. Uh, and uh, maybe that makes resolving the problem more difficult. But also, I think it it, it underlines that really this is a this is a problem to which there should be a negotiated solution. And uh, it may be difficult because of the emotions and lack of rationality involved. But uh, it should be negotiated. Thank you. Okay, let me come back again on, only with the question of the of the political character of the independence movement. Uh, it's a massive movement in Catalonia. Uh, let me insist on that, but the question is not that. My, my question is why five years ago does not exist and now is so massive? What is behind the necessity of people going to the streets demanding more democracy? And my personal answer is that as we debate in this uh, summer school, is that the globalization has winners and losers. And the working class of the south of Europe, we are the losers of the globalization. There's no future for our people under the material conditions that actually neoliberalism is imposing in Spain. The people is needed to find an identity the precariousness, I mean, the way the working class is completely automatized, take out the possibility of a class identity. And it's very uh, logical to understand that if you don't have anything, no, nothing to protect you, fear to the future, there is no middle class dream, as I told you, that it was the Catalonian narrative. There is nothing anymore. Why not to try to have an identity based on the nation? Really, honestly, I don't have a concrete answer, but I think on that every day, because it's amazing. That's the reason because I deny the left political character of the movement as a whole. Of course, there are left people inside, of course. And of course, the left people is the first people going confronting the police. That's the reason because we saw them in the, in the, in the pictures. I will go to defend the people, even if I not agree with independence. Of course I will. But there is not, let me insist on that, an emancipation of the class, of the poor, of the working class inside the independence movement in Catalonia today. That is not. And, uh, and let me insist on that very clearly, because it will be lovely to have a social revolution in Catalonia and to be clear that they are my people and we have to support them because the social revolution is there, but it is not the case. 
maybe we can help that to happen, to supporting the left in Catalonia. Of course, that is our task too, and the left in all, of, uh, all the territories. But I would like to insist on that because I'm afraid, and you know what is my worry? My worry is that this movement is negotiated, led by the right-wing people, but the people who is going to confront with the army, if the Spanish government sent the army there, is the left and most solidarity people. But who negotiating in, in our name is other guys. That's my worry, because I insist on that all the time. And of course, we have, I insist, talk with the independents, talk with the coup in, in Catalonia, support Ada Colau movement. I think Ada Colau has the best position in Catalonia, and she has the, mm, the moral values to be defending the right to vote and against the independency. And of course, she's confronting the president of Catalonia all the time. There's a wonderful speech Ada Colau made, Bella loves it. <laughs> Uh, when the president of Catalonia, which is a bourgeois guy, uh, asked uh, to the, to the um, disobedient, the Catalonian uh, people has to be disobedient with the state, Ada Colau took the floor and to say, now you are coming here to tell me to, to be disobedient. I was confronting uh, the police, putting my body to stop eviction, and you sent the police to pick me up. When we ask the left, us, for disobedient to defend social health, education, we put our bodies, let me insist, with the huge eviction movement in Catalonia, Adacola was there, this guy was in front of us. So she was like that, very, very enraged to say, mm. <laughs> because this guy said that Adacola was a traitor. She, she's great, I mean, she's a uh, fan. I'm a fanatic of Adagolau, really. I like it very much, but I think she knows exactly, uh, she has this position, and, and I think helping her and Comu Podem, the coup also, of course, they left independence people, some like excellent, I mean, some of them are very good friends of mine, and excellent. And they have this analysis, which is, uh, we are not in the hegemony of the movement, that we are going to have, so let's just start with Catalonia, and then with Spain, which is, has arguments, of course they have. I mean, as I told you before, but my personal sensation is not so optimistic. That's, that's only. And of course, the, the shadow of Yugoslavia is, is there. Is there. Anyway, thank you very much for your contributions. <laughs>